date of invoice is 5th january receipt of goods 10th january date of payment 15th january date when payment debited to bank account 17th date immediately following 30 days from the date of issue invoice by the supplier it is more than 30 days here so now we have to check that one which date has to be considered here and what are the things are they in this three whichever is earlier that will be considered here so 15th january is the answer for time of supply Warm welcome to Six M B based on the subject we are discussing goods and services tax. In our previous session, we have discussed about composite supply and mixed supply. And in today's session, we are going to have the problems on composite supply, mixed supply, and time of supply, and even the place of supply and the value of GST payable by the ultimate consumer or the person who has collected the GST from the consumer, he will be responsible to pay the GST on behalf of the consumer to the government. I am Professor Rajesh L. R. from Department of Commerce and Management from Vidyasram First Grade College, Temple of Excellence, Mysuru. In our previous session, prompts on composite supplies were made, mixed supply, from and goods transport agencies, time of supply, reverse charge and forward charge. In today's session, we are going to have format of time of supply under reverse charge under section 12 sub clause 3 and 12 sub clause 4 under section 13 and from on time of supply rate of tax, tax liability with new rate of GST as per GST Act of 2017, we are going to discuss. The first one here, the format on time of supply and the reverse charge under section 12 sub clause 3. It says, what are the formats we have here? The first we have to consider the date of receipt of goods, the date of payment as entered in your books of accounts, the date on which payment is debited to the bank account, date immediately following 30 days from the date of issue. It is nothing but here, I have issued on 1st March 2024 if the date what they have mentioned here 5th April 2024 see here date immediately following 30 days from the date of issue invoice by the supplier it is more than 30 days here so now we have to check that one which date has to be considered here and what are the things are they so let us solve the problem here in the problem Determine the time of supply in each of the following independent cases in accordance with provision under section 12 sub clause 3. The date of invoice is 5th January, 10th January, 15th January and 17th January. In the first case they are given 5th January, 10th January, 15th January, 17th January. Date of invoice is 5th January. Receipt of goods 10th January, date of payment 15th January, date when payment debited to bank account 17th. Say, leaving date of invoice, leaving date of invoice in the first case, date of receipt, date of payment and amount debited to bank account. In this three, whichever is earlier, whichever is earlier, 10th January, 15th January, 17th. So, 10th January is earlier. So, we have to write here. 10th January 2023. In the second case, we have again the invoice is 5th January, date of receipt is 20th January and date of payment is 15th January and the amount is debited on 17th January. So, in the case 2, again we have to leave the date of invoice, we have to consider date of receipt of goods, payment of goods, amount debited to bank. In this three, whichever is earlier, that will be considered here. So, 15th January is the answer for time of supply. Next, case three, the same date is invoice, date of receipt of goods is 20th, date of payment of goods is 17th and amount debited to bank account is 16th. In the case three, we are going to leave 5th January, we are going to consider 
28th January, 17th January and 16th January. In this three, whichever is earlier, 16th January 2023 is the earliest. So we have to write the time of supply as 16th January 2023. And in the last case, 5th February, 20th March, 23rd March and 25th March. So here, what they are given? What is the date of invoice they are given? 5th February. Receipt of goods is 20th March. Payment of goods is 23rd March. And amount debited to my bank account was 25th March. 5th February, 20th March, 23rd March, 25th March year. So now, the date what we have to write in the time of supply means, in the last case, it is above 30 days. In all other case, it is less than 30 days. In the last case, it is above 30 days. For that reason, the date what we are going to consider for the time of supply exactly from the date of invoice, from the date of invoice, 30 days. Means 5th February 2023 from year 30 days. 30 days means it will be 5th March 2023. The time of supply will be 5th March 2023 will be the time of supply. This is how you have to write. In the first case, date of receipt will be the time of supply. In the second case, date of payment will be the time of supply. In the third case, date of when the payment is debited to bank account, when we receive the amount to our bank. And in the last case, 30 days from the date of invoice. In this similar type of pattern, they are going to ask the questions in the examination. One day I have to write here, in the first case, date of receipt, second case, date of payment, and the third case, amount debited to bank account. In the fourth case, from the date of invoice, 30 days, and we should not record any of this. This is a concept what we have under GST Council 12 sub clause 3. 12 sub clause 3. Next, format on time of supply as per section 12 sub clause 4. So next concept we are going to discuss here, orchards exchangeable for goods, date of issue of orchard, if the supply is identified at the point of time of supply, date of issue of orchard, if the supplies are not identifiable at that point of time, time of supply will be the date of redemption of orchard. See, here we have in the first case, date of issue of the orchard if the supply that is covered identified at that point or date of redemption of the orchard in all other cases. And here we have three different concepts. If we solve the problem, we can understand easily. The problem what we have here, Peter England, a ready-made garment manufacturer, issued the voucher on 19th January 2023 to the prospective customer for enabling them to buy ready-made garments manufactured by them from their shop. Customer purchased ready-made garments on 28th February 2023. Find the time of supply of goods. Issuance of orchard is 19th January. Customer purchased on 28th February. The time of supply of goods will be 19th January. In the present case, the time of supply will be issuance of orchard. Whatever the date we have here, this has to be considered for the time of supply and not the purchase date. There's a thing what we have to write in the examination for two marks question. Next we have here, one more problem. Mall of Mysore store, a large retailer who sells various types of products like ready-made garments, jewelry, cosmetics, fabrics, shoes, etc. Issued a voucher on 12th February 23 to their prospective customers for enabling to them to buy any product from their shop. Customer purchase a ready-made on 16th March. Find the time of supply of goods. So in this case, date of issuance is 12th February. Purchase was 16th March. We are going to consider 12th February, whichever is earlier, date of encashment of OCHA. So they are saying that one. So what we have to do here, the amount 
whenever we have n cash it is different here but whenever we should the voucher that date has to be considered for the time of supply this is the information what you write according to 12 sub class 4 of gst act 2017 and time of supply of services that was goods now we are discussing service under section 13 supply of service on which the supplier is liable to pay tax Receipt of service that is taxable under reverse charge means again it is going to be charged here. Supply of vouchers that can be used to pay services, residual cases, 13 sub clause 2, 13 sub clause 3, forward charge and reverse charge. So here again it will be charged for us or it is going to be charged in the further process of the goods or services format what we have here date of provision of service the first one we have date of provision of service second one date of recording the payment in the books of accounts whatever the date we are going to record in the books of accounts those information and date of which payment is credited to the bank account in this three whichever is earlier will be considered as time of supply so now 13 sub clause 3 says that one date of recording the information in books of account amount debited to the bank account and immediately following 60 days from the date of issue in the goods it was 30 days in the service it is 60 days so in these three whichever is earlier as per 13 sub clause 3 so let us consider here a problem Prom on time of supply, rate of tax and tax liability with new rate of GST, date of supply of goods are given, invoice they are given, payment they are given and the value of goods they are given. So here, yeah, date of change is effective rate of tax is 1st February. The date what they changed here was the rate of tax was changed on 1st February where it was earlier 5%, now it is going to be 12%. Find the time of supply of goods with effective rate of tax and GST liability. GST liability is nothing but what is the amount of GST as a person have to pay to the government. Now, when they have changed the rate of tax on 1st February, see here, uh, when the date of invoice has taken place, payment has taken place. Go through this one, then you decide for which case we have to consider the new rate and for which cases we have to consider the old rate. First one, date of supply of goods is 28th January, invoice is 9th February, payment is 12th February, supplies in these two, whichever is earlier, time of supply will be 9th February. So in these two days, invoice and payment, invoice and payment in these two days, whichever is earlier is considered as time of supply, 9th February. What is the amount of goods we have supplied here? 12 lakhs. So now new rate, it is not old rate, old rate is old rate was 5% and the new rate is 12%. 12 lakhs into 12 lakhs into 12 by 100, 0, 0 get cancelled, so it will be 1 lakh 44,000. Now, date of, in the case 2, date of invoice and date of payment. In these two, whichever is earlier, so 27th January. So, 27th January is before 1st February. So, it is going to attract old tax rate, that is 5%. So, 9 lakh into 5% will be 45,000. In the third case, date of invoice is 11th February and payment was 2nd February in these two, whichever is earlier. So the date will be a 2nd February 2023 and it is after 1st February. So it is going to be a new GST rate that is 12%. 13 13,50,000 into 12%, it'll be 1,62,000. In these two cases, whichever is earlier, 2nd February is the earliest date. So now 2nd February is nothing but after 1st February. So it attracts new GST rate, 12%. 16,50,000 into 12% will be 1,98,000. In these two cases, date of payment will be considered 3rd February, whichever is earlier. 
So it is after 1st February. So it is going to attract new GST 12%, 6,50,000 into 12%. It will be 1 lakh, sorry, 78,000. Date of invoice and date of payment in these two, the date earliest date is 2nd February. So it is after 1st February. So 12,50 into 12% will be 1,50,000. This is a GST payable by the person registered under GST. So now as per the rates changed here, he has to pay as per the new GST rates, not as per the old GST rate. The GST rates came into effective on 1st February. We have to see the time of supply when it has taken. If it is before 1st February, then it will be old GST rate that is 5%. If it is after 1st February, including 1st February, so it will be 12%. So new G only in one case we have the old GST rates and next it is a new GST rates new 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 and new so here all are new only one concept will be the old GST rate this is the thing how we have to solve the problem the value of supply goods will be given I have to identify the time of supply and then we have to calculate the rate of GST whether it is old or new then we have to calculate the amount of GST payable by the person to the government so next the reasons in the first one we have considered date of invoice second case date of invoice third case date of payment date of invoice date of payment and date of invoice c in this case date of invoice date of invoice date of payment date of invoice date of payment date of invoice this is the information what we have considered here this is the information reasons for time of supply, date of invoice or payment received whichever is earlier. This is a concept has to be considered while solving the problem whenever the rates has been changed and in other process. In the next session, we are going to discuss about transaction value under section 15 sub clause 1, exclusion of discounts and problems on rule 27 and rule 30 and 31. Thank you to all 6MBB students and namaste to all of you. In today's session, we learned what is the type of supply should be considered under section 12 sub clause 3 as well as 13 sub clause 3 and 4. So thank you once again to all the students go through the session and understand the concepts easily where you can clear your paper without any hurdles and score the center marks. Thank you once again.